In this video, we're going to look at how earthquakes are related to plate tectonics. Until the development of the plate tectonics model, scientists did not understand why earthquakes occur where they do. This map is showing all the earthquakes that happen around Earth, and you might notice that they pretty much trace out the plate boundaries. Uh, but there are differences between the plate boundaries as we have discussed. There are convergent boundaries, divergent boundaries, and transform boundaries. And so if you consider the divergent boundaries, the mid-ocean ridges, like here's the mid-Atlantic ridge running through Iceland and down the middle of the Atlantic. Here's the Indian ridge in the Indian Ocean. Um, there is the East Pacific rise, and all of them are accompanied by earthquakes. Um, and the blue represents very shallow earthquakes. And the green represent moderate depth earthquakes. And the red represent deep earthquakes. And prior to plate tectonics theory, scientists really couldn't explain the existence of the deep focus earthquake. Uh, focus just means the place where the rock actually cracks and breaks and slips. And so the very deepest earthquakes are only found in a few areas around the surface of the Earth. Along the Andes Mountains, um, along the Tonga, all the way up to the Philippine Islands, along Japan, Indonesia, those are the only places that we find really, really deep earthquakes. And those earthquakes were uh, quite a source of confusion prior to plate tectonics theory. Scientific evidence predicts that, Earth should only, that earthquakes should only occur in the Earth's rigid outer layer. Right? Remember, we have a rigid crust connected to the top rigid part of the mantle, which makes up the rigid lithosphere. And something that's rigid is brittle, it's solid, it can stress and strain and eventually <clears throat> break and crack and create an earthquake. So over time, stress builds and builds and builds and builds. This is a place showing a transform boundary where this chunk is moving in that direction and the chunk with the, the uh, building on it is moving in this direction. And stress is building up and it's storing elastic energy like a stressed rubber band. But what happens when you continue to pull and pull and pull a rubber band, eventually it breaks. And when it breaks, that snapping back releases a lot of energy <clears throat> in the form of seismic waves, which can make buildings and bridges and other human constructions topple, as well as trigger landslides. <clears throat> so once the rock is strained beyond its breaking point, it ruptures, it releases its stored up energy, and that energy is what creates an earthquake. So we can really only have earthquakes in something that is solid. Right? If it was liquid and it was experiencing stress, it would just flow in response to that stress and it would never break. Right? You can't tear water in two. It just flows around opposing motions. So the fact that we know the asthenosphere is a gooey, weak, more molten layer from studying actually earthquake waves means that you really shouldn't be able to have earthquakes in the asthenosphere. Um, the hot mobile rocks of the asthenosphere are not capable of storing elastic energy. And because of that, they should not be capable of generating an earthquake. And we know that the crust under the ocean, the lithosphere under the ocean, is 10 to 100 kilometers thick. And under most continental masses, it's between 100 and maybe a couple hundred kilometers thick. And in the thickest places, it's a little over 250 kilometers thick. And underneath 250 kilometers, we're into the asthenosphere. And yet, in these few unusual places traced in red on these diagrams, we actually get earthquakes that are 700 kilometers deep. And we know that that is definitely into the asthenosphere, so we should not be able to have earthquakes at those depths. In addition to plate tectonics, scientists were able to account for the closest, or in addition, Prior to plate tectonics, scientists were unable to account for the close association between the deep focus earthquakes 
and the occurrence of ocean trenches. So every place we find these very, very deep earthquakes, like in the Andes Mountains, there's always a parallel trench, the Peru-Chile Trench. Along the Tonga earthquakes, deep earthquakes, there's a Tonga Trench. Along the Philippine deep earthquakes, there's a Marianas Trench. Along the Indonesian deep earthquakes, we have the Java Trench. Japan's deep earthquakes are bordered by um, the Japan Trench. So every place you have deep earthquakes, you always have a trench. You can have a trench and not have deep earthquakes, but even when you have a trench um, without deep earthquakes, you just still get fairly moderately deep earthquakes. Right? The Central American Trench has moderately deep earthquakes associated with it. So we're going to zoom in on the Tonga Trench. And what I would like you to do is look at this data. Right? It's collected from various earthquakes along the Tonga Trench. Um, this is a cross section. So here's the ocean, here's the Tonga Island sticking up out of the ocean, and this downward direction is if we could, say, chop the world in half and look at it in cross section. So we're looking at a side view where we have the ocean, the Tonga Islands, some more ocean, and depth below the bottom of the seafloor. And here's the Tonga Trench. And these are a handful of earthquakes that occurred in that region. And so the challenge here is to take a piece of scratch paper, draw out two axes on the x-axis. You can have um, distance. And on the vertical axis, or the y-axis, you can put depth. But because we're doing depth, let's put zero at the top and greater numbers going deeper. And then take this data, pause this video, and take this data and plot. At a distance of 520 kilometers, the depth was 50. At a distance of 550 kilometers, the depth was 650 kilometers. So pause the video for a moment, uh, take a piece of scratch paper, graph that out. Okay, hopefully you paused. Did you graph it yet? I'll give you a moment more. Okay, hopefully you have everything graphed. I'm going to skip to the graphed data at this point. So if you haven't graphed it yet, pause now. Make sure you graph it. Here's the completed data. Hopefully your graph looks similar to this graph. Um, when you look at the position and depth of earthquakes, they definitely make a pattern. Right? It's not a perfectly straight line, but it's not randomly scattered everywhere either. The shallow earthquakes all tend to be very near the trench. The moderate earthquakes tend to be right underneath the Tonga Islands. And the deepest earthquakes are actually um, on the other side of the Tonga Islands in comparison to the trench. Can you explain the distribution of earthquakes shown in the diagram? Right, take a moment, see if you can figure out what's happening here. Maybe even pause the video, write down your answer. Um, and in a moment, we'll look at what scientists think. Here's what scientists believe explains this pattern. In the plate tectonics model, ocean trenches are produced where cold, dense slabs of ocean lithosphere plunge into the asthenosphere. So here's the ocean trench right here. Because this is a cold, old, rigid plate, it breaks and cracks as it's bumping against this other plate and bending down into the asthenosphere. And lots of shallow focus earthquakes are produced as the descending plate is bent and where it interacts with the overriding plate. This is the overriding plate. As the cold, rigid slab descends further into the asthenosphere, deeper and deeper earthquakes are generated. Because the quakes occur within the rigid, subducting plate, rather within the hot, gooey asthenosphere, they provide a method of tracking the, the, the plate's descent into the mantle.
So you can see this asthenosphere that's kind of a salmon color here is gooey and soft and no earthquakes are occurring in the asthenosphere just as we would expect. The earthquakes are occurring in a cold subducting plate that's being forced down into the asthenosphere and eventually it'll get to a depth at which it melts enough so that it will no longer be rigid enough to produce an earthquake. Typically that's just a little bit shy of uh, 700 kilometers deep. Only shallow focus earthquakes occur along the ocean ridge system where seafloor spreading is occurring. Mostly that's because the molten material is right up against the bottom of the uh, very thin lithosphere at the mid-ocean ridges. Since subduction zones are the only places where cold slabs of oceanic crust reach great depths, these should be the only sites of deep, op o deep focus earthquakes. And indeed, that's exactly what we find. We only find deep, op o deep focus earthquakes when they're adjacent to a subduction zone and an oceanic trench. And this is very, very good support for plate tectonics theory.